For Practice Update, I'm Dr. Farzana Hafizula. Thank you for joining us. I'm here with Dr. Roy Herbst, Ensign Professor of Medicine and Chief of Medical Oncology at Yale Cancer Center and Smilo Cancer Hospital in New Haven, Connecticut. Dr. Herbst, thank you for joining me today. Uh, thank you for having me. So still on the topic of immunotherapy, during the poster discussion section, um, Naya Rizvi presented data on the use of immunotherapy for many thoracic malignancies. What's your opinion on this data presented? Well, uh, immunotherapy has changed the way we look at thoracic cancer. So I lead the thoracic oncology program at the Smile Cancer Hospital at Yale. Yes. Um, I used to lead the program at MD Anderson for many years. And I can tell you that aside from targeted therapy, which, you know, you have a uh, genetic defect, you have a target, you give an EGFR inhibitor, an ALK inhibitor. Um, I've never seen anything, you know, as impressive as immunotherapy for many of these diseases. Now, the caveat is, as well as it works, it still only works in about one in five. But if you look at immunotherapy in, in, in lung cancer, uh, mesothelioma, you know, patients are coming in who have no genetic drivers, who really would have gotten chemotherapy and had a survival of six months to a year, and now we are seeing people live longer. That's important, you know, I think for your audience because everyone else who sees these patients, the pulmonologists, the cardiologists, the internists, now needs to realize that there's a whole new breed of patients with lung cancer who are maybe not cured of their disease because it's too soon to say that it's curative. But in those patients, they're living with a cancer. But as you activate the immune system against a cancer, you do activate it against the thyroid. So you're going to see a great deal of thyroid issues against the colon. You might see colitis, pneumonitis, you know, something to really keep an eye on. Um, skin rash, you know, other issues, but it really is, is, is a huge advance. Oh. Absolutely. Well, you know, to that thought process, uh, ASCO named immunotherapy as a clinical cancer advance of the year for 2016. And you said it perfectly when you mentioned that this is now a whole new arena, not just for oncologists, for, for all healthcare providers involved in caring for that particular patient. How do you propose we translate some of that information and this new thought process throughout the medical community to increase that collaborative spirit, as it were, as we're seeing this immunotherapy on the horizon with such success? Well, you know, at Yale, I lead a, a SPORE, which is a specialized program in research excellence. It's a large grant for lung cancer, one of four sites in the United States that has this. And through that, we're actually studying this very carefully. So, you know, in science, you know, in medicine, the fact that we're seeing activity, proof of concept is huge. And, you know, everyone's so excited about it at ASCO, and, and they should be because 20% of a disease that kills 200,000 Americans a year and, you know, 1.5, 2 million people in the world a year is, is a huge advance. But we still have to figure out why it works in some and not others. And one of the things we're very focused on in our research, and we're presenting some data here and at other meetings this year, is what is it about those patients who respond and then become resistant? So we're, we're doing biopsies at our center at the start of treatment and after they become resistant to ask what's different. And is there any way that we can then stimulate them to respond again? Or, you know, patients who never benefit, those primary resistant patients, that's where combinations of drugs are going to come in. And as I walk through the halls of ASCO, that's what the posters are about. Sure. In fact, I'm presenting one myself of a combination of pembrolizumab and ramacirumab. That's an angiogenesis inhibitor. And while the results are early, we're showing safe uh, combination and potentially, you know, uh, something that could be more active than one drug alone that now needs to go to further study. I think you mentioned something extraordinarily vital, is studying the tumor and then the changes that happen that, to that particular tumor, not only after treatment, but as you have metastatic lesions, you know, understanding the proteins that are translated and expressed in those particular proteins and then using targeted therapy against that particular tumor, individualizing the treatment and maximizing use of the immune system, as you mentioned. Exactly. Well, one of the biggest papers here at ASCO is basically showing that you profile tumors and, and by knowing what's going on, uh, you treat them better. And, and that makes sense. You know, you wouldn't, if a car comes in and it's broken, you wouldn't just start throwing stuff at the car. You'd figure out what's, what's exactly wrong. Much more important in a human.